to handle the class on emerging trends in weather-based agro-advisories. So very pleasant afternoon to one and all. So after your lunch break, we are seeing about the weather-based agro-advisories. Almost uh, this is uh, actually this is today. So today is a very important day because every week, Tuesday and Friday seems to be a hectic day for our department. And also we are we have around um, uh, seven GKMS units and nine DAMU units working under the uh, Agroclimate Research Center and which was sponsored by India Meteorological Department. So every week of this uh, Tuesday and uh, Friday, we used to get receive the weather forecast from India Meteorological Department, and uh, you are the supporters from the near uh, nearest agricultural officers. Uh, officers, we will get the database regarding the crop details, and uh, together put together, we will be preparing the weather-based agro advisories for the needy farmers. With this introduction, we will move to the next slide. So before uh, to directly go into the topic, I wish to um, portrait what is the weather events and what is the impact of uh, climate change triggered weather events. So in this slide, you could witness around different modes of weather events uh, that is occurring globally. So starting from cyclone, extreme rainfall, cold or snowstorm, and CS minimum, drought, rainfall, marine heat wave, etc., etc. What not extreme events are occurring globally, and uh, we could see for India. The extreme rainfall category seems to be the highest triggered even by the climate change. This is because what we have seen in the recent past, every, every alternate year we used to get this uh, type of unseasonal rainfall and especially this January 2021, which we recorded the unseasonal rainfall almost all the districts in the Tamil Nadu. And here Coimbatore we have recorded around 144 mm. And this was very, very uneven because um, that seems to be a cold weather period, right? Because uh, dew will be the prominent feature during the month of uh, January, but uh, all this dew deposition has been washed off due to the extreme rainfall during uh, which was received during the month of January. And this was a climate change vulnerability index worked for the different uh, countries of the world. And we could see India ranks to be the second position. It has been placed in the second position to face the extremities of the climate change. So this paves or makes a attention for the uh, entire scenario, Indian scenario to face and prepare, get prepared for the climate change, whatever is happening in and around us. And this is very, very basic uh, to, for the students, right? So this is the difference between the climate variability and climate change. Usually we used to tell for our uh, UG and PG students, but it also makes a sense for us to understand what is the difference between the variability and climate change. So whatever the weather event, it may be, um, in a, for example, if you consider a days, for example, today maybe you are a dry day or cloudy day, or it is a rainy day, we call it as a weather. And when it uh, accumulates over a season, season then it it takes around some months and over a period of months it takes around some years so this variability ends about a year for example uh, over a period of 10 years if i want to know how many of years has been towards the wet side and how many of the years towards the dry side then i need at least uh, 10 years of cycle to assess the difference in the variability so that gives us the variability it's like a pendulum it may oscillate towards either positive mode or towards your negative mode but i wish to know whether that trend is persistent whether the same pattern is moving towards a positive side maybe the rainfall uh, uh, may be running towards increasing trend or the rainfall towards the receding trend i need to have at least 30 years of data the weather data needs to be a 30 years and with that 30 years i could make a sense that the temperature is definitely shooting up towards the positive trend like your minimum temperature now if, if you witness compared to your maximum temperature the minimum temperature seems to be in the rising trend and I could strongly say that it is there is a significant rising in the minimum temperature when I analyze for a period of 30 years. So that's what here given in the downward scales, like uh, if for a rain or squall occurring in the period of hours, and if it is a cyclone, it takes about a, a, about five to six days. And if it comes for decades, there are different climatic drivers called as you are Pacific decadal oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation, quasi biennial oscillation and Southern Oscillation Index. These are the different climatic drivers which makes a different phenomena which enter into the, which will have an impact in our rainfall period. 
And this slide explains the extreme weather events or on the rise, according to the IPCC, that is your uh, International Panel on Climate Change around 2012. So almost all the extreme events like your cyclone, heavy rains, heat wave, flood and drought, every incident seem to be increasing in intensity and also the duration is increasing. For example, the cyclone life cycle may be three to four days, but nowadays the cyclone life cycle is extended to a period of five to six days. Though it may be very meager, but one or two days extending period of the cyclone will have a huge impact when it make a cross in the post fall or the landfall over areas. And also the heavy rains, which we're experiencing in the last one or two months, we cannot uh, there will be an incessation rain that means continuously rains will be there and there will be no possibility to make or dry the agricultural produce which which will entirely damages the agricultural produce and this heat wave that uh, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned is uh, far for better because even our neighbor neighbor states are highly vulnerable to this heat wave extent and all but since now Tamil Nadu has not experienced uh, such type of heat wave and flood once there is a cyclonic activity definitely there is seems to be an inundation which leads to floods in most of the coastal districts of Tamil Nadu and this drought definitely for over a period of two to three years we have this drought incidents which previously witnessed during the year 2016 and coming to our subject almost uh, when we say about weather forecast everyone each former and also general public will have a concern over the rainfall so rest of the weather parameters will make only a little sense while the rainfall will trigger our minds when we uh, actually when we are in a stressful situation the rain receiving outside will make us to feel pleasant and uh, maybe almost all of us might be experiencing the smell which is released during the rain so that is actually because of the oils secreted by the plants which is termed as petrichor and also some bacteria will be emitting a compounds like your geosmin and when there is a rainfall during the stormy weather condition the diatomic oxygen will be broken and it will make to form ozone that is the O3 which is uh, very much helpful in the stratospheric atmosphere and it will filter the UV radiation that protects almost all the human beings in the globe. And this slide very well explain about the monsoon and also the dependence of rainfall over the monsoon period. So whenever there is a good amount of rainfall received, definitely, and that too, if the rainfall is well distributed, it will boost the agricultural production. So the timely rainfall and also the necessary quantity of rainfall when realized, definitely that year seems to be the best year for the agricultural production. So the, when the agricultural monsoon is very good, it will actually increase the consumer demand and uh, will also reflects in the good harvest and it will make a check for the food inflation. So as far as concern for this concerned year, agriculture contribute to around 20% of GDP compared to the previous year 1920. So that's, that much importance has been arised due to the well receipt of the rainfall and there is a contradictory session also so when there is a good monsoon definitely it will fetch more income and uh, it is very common to observe that uh, most of the harvest periods ends with uh, some festivals so while uh, for tamil nadu we celebrate uh, um, um, you know pongal during the end of the uh, monsoon season and also like kerala they celebrate onam so almost all the harvest period ends with some festival which makes the farmers to uh, rejuvenate the whatever the produce they have realized so in contrast whenever there is a poor monsoon definitely it will make a very bad inflation rate and almost it will reduce the gdp growth to around two to five percent so definitely what will happen once this agricultural output has a has been lower eventually it make the rural disposable income also to be lower so not only that Almost um, when the monsoon is not good, it will have a uh, effect on the detrimental effect on the hydroelectrical power also. So the power generation, because almost there was no perennial river originating from Tamil Nadu. So definitely when there is a poor monsoon or bad monsoon years, it will also reflect in the storage capacity of the dams which in uh, turn also affect the electrical electricity generation and power generation, etc. So with this prospects, we could know, we could see that almost uh, only 33% of the cultivated area depends upon the irrigation facility, whereas rest of the cultivated land directly or indirectly depends upon rainfall. So that means the rainfall agriculture really 
fetches only based upon the whatever the rainfall received. So almost when we see about the rain-fed agriculture, already it is um, being considered that is a poor fertility of the soil and also the water availability and nutrient availability is limited in the rain-fed agriculture. So if suppose though we receive the rainfall, almost if there is uh, short breaks, maybe the duration of the break in the rainfall occurrence, maybe five to seven days, it may not harm to that much extent. So if suppose if the ex, uh, dry spell week is extended, definitely it will make a very sensitization for the agricultural crop mostly in the rain fed areas so how how and uh, uh, how far it can be mitigated is by the improvement of your drought resistant varieties and by utilizing the carbon dioxide fertilization effect which is uh, uh, higher the higher amount of carbon dioxide concentration that must be a uh, can be enriched by means of carbon dioxide fertilization to compact the climate variability in addition, we can also give some sort of supplemental irrigation for the rainfed areas and can also promote the crop insurance in those areas to alleviate the stress under rainfed agriculture. So this was the same which I have uh, insisted in the last slide. So almost 60% of the crop area comes under the rainfed agriculture and it is highly vulnerable to the climatic variability and also the climate change. So this is very uh, peculiar because India is a country which is best served with the two types of monsoon and the Indian summer monsoon is the dominant for the entire country except Tamil Nadu and Jammu and Kashmir. So as we know, the monsoon season starts during the June and ends in the September and uh, almost uh, the monsoon mechanism is a very, very complex phenomena, which is very difficult to explain in a single class. But the basic difference in the monsoon preparation is the differential heating in the land and the ocean. As we know, the land has the capability to heat the atmosphere as early and uh, releases the heat as quickly. But the ocean or the sea surface water has the capability to retain the uh, retain the temperature and also it releases the temperature slowly. So this basic difference will create a variation in the pressure. So whenever uh, the land is heated, so a low pressure will be developed in the land area. And at that time, the high pressure prevailing in the sea surface or the ocean surface will supply the necessary sufficient moisture to the low pressure area that we usually called as a gradient. So this movement of water along with the moisture carrying towards the land surface will give you the monsoon. Almost in the during the monsoon period, the Mumbai and Kolkata, these two places receive the highest quantity of rainfall during the entire monsoon season. So as we know, the gateway of Indian monsoon is the Kerala and uh, the normal onset date is, uh, seems to be June 1st and now it has been shifted to June 4th. So that comes the second type of uh, forecast, seasonal climate forecast. So this is also very much important because as we know, uh, uh, in, uh, in the recent past also we have seen in the television, there has been more number of smog and uh, um, I mean, uh, suspension particles uh, prevailing in the Delhi region. And at Chennai also, we felt the same type of decrease in air quality ranging to less than 100%, which has uh, make a uh, very hard for the people to breathe and inhale. So such type of uh, pollutants may be deposited in the atmosphere due to more number of industrialization, which releases the sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. So rainfall is a one, one and only phenomena which has the capability to wash out almost all the pollutants and makes the atmosphere clear. So that is the that is the reason we all feel the rainfall is the one and the only thing which has a very ample triggers to the environment and also the human beings. So for want uh, for want of rainfall, definitely at times of drought period, we also uh, I mean uh, go for the prayers for a good monsoon for the particular year. Coming to the slide, this is the India Meteorological Department. That is a nodal center or the nodal agency for the weather forecast. So IMD has divided the India into 36 subdivisions. So almost if you could see Tamil Nadu fell under the 31 subdivision of India. So all uh, if you could see this um, India Meteorological Department, all the, all the most they will be issuing two times the long range forecast. That is the seasonal forecast. First during the month of April, it will say what will be the expected forecast for the entire season. And again, based upon the indices and also the global parameters, they will rework this uh, analysis and will put 
put forth the second set of uh, forecast during the month of June for the widespread, whether the that particular year is expecting a good amount of rainfall or uh, is there any phenomena related to drought. So why this monsoon forecast is very important? Because every year when there is a forecast for a particular year, depending upon whether the monsoon performance is good or bad, the food production will be assessed. So for example, during the 2019, uh, there was a 26% uh, of overestimate over the period of the food production. And for the year 2021, seems to be a very good monsoon. And it has also projected 2.5% increase over the gross area. So Karib season crops like your uh, most of your rice cereals coarse grain cereals everything will depend upon the uh, depend upon the summer monsoon rainfall so almost the karif crops will will require high temperature and also the high intensity of rain, uh, precipitation so when these two factors combine all the karif crops or the karif growing seasonal crops will be benefited and the yield will be on the higher side so if you compare for the rabi season May, maybe the rainfall quantity will be high, but it should be supplemental with the supplemental irrigation to substantiate or the yield, fa yield favoring factor will not be that much of temperature because your temperature will be the limiting factor for the rabi season. So likewise, our, our Indian geographical position is located in such a way, what type of weather factors will influence what, ty what type of uh, yield for that particular area. So this monsoon forecast by the Indian Meteorological Department uh, plays a key role in uh, food production areas and also to go for what types of crops for that particular area. As I said, Tamil Nadu is deviating from the Indian summer monsoon because we are uh, the benefited by Northeast monsoon. So in Tamil Nadu, when you consider only five districts of Tamil Nadu is bestowed with two types of monsoon, either uh, with your Southwest monsoon, also with your Northeast monsoon. The districts such as you are Salem, Krishnagiri and Dharmaburi and Neil Greece and your uh, nail grease, etc. So all these districts uh, will be benefited or bestowed with both the type of monsoon. So here, northeast monsoon, this is the period from October to December. It influences the rabi crops for the southern peninsula India. So if you see Tamil Nadu, almost 48% of the rainfall received will be account for the annual rainfall. So the annual rainfall for Tamil Nadu is around 950 millimeter, in which 48% of rainfall is afforded by the, during your northeast monsoon season that means we could also we can we can um, endorse how much important is the northeast monsoon and uh, when we see the northeast monsoon onset date it lies between october 20th with one one standard deviation so this onset uh, in the onset of monsoon date will be varying with one 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 standard deviation means we can either expect with 15th of october or we can uh, um, expect up to 27th of october so those category comes under the normal onset of monsoon so here you could see a dotted line which is called as a trough so trough is a line which connects the lines of equal low pressure. So you could see that is this is lying between the east-west direction from the northwest Rajasthan to the Bay of Bengal. So all the weather parameters, whatever the atmospheric phenomena we are saying is not a static phenomena. It is a dynamic feature. So this line will not be static and it is a semi-permanent in nature, it will either oscillate towards the northern direction or to the southern direction. So when this trough line is moving towards your northern direction, normally you will, you are, the break in monsoon will be on the higher side. So when this trough line is moving towards your southern direction, the break in monsoon, that is the period of dry spell, five to seven days or seven to 10 days, that will be on the lower side. So this is the advantage and how the breaks in monsoon is considered during the monsoon season. So as I said, for the summer monsoon, it is entirely depending upon the heating of your land masses and also the ocean surfaces. And uh, when you see for the northeast monsoon, it is a reversal pattern from the direction. So almost uh, if you see the monsoon starts from June 1st and it covers the entire state by July 15th. And from July 15th onwards, the monsoon retreats from the Rajasthan and it will uh, follow towards your southern parts. So while uh, re retreating, the direction of the wind will be changing and it will hit the Bay of Bengal and suck the sufficient moisture and pour into Tamil Nadu. So that is the northeast monsoon and that's why the northeast monsoon quantity is higher for Tamil Nadu. 
So now we could um, uh, appreciate how far the monsoon is important and what is the mechanism of monsoon. So what comes the aberrations in monsoon behavior? So almost what I have listed is late onset of monsoon and early withdrawal of monsoon. So this is the important aberrations happening in the monsoon period. So I, I have told you that uh, the onset of summer monsoon may be from 1st June to First, uh, first week may be taken. And also if I say Northeast monsoon, it may be October 20th and with plus or mi minus one standard deviation. So if suppose the entry date is first or fourth, with if it is um, uh, the onset is delayed for one week in the total quantity of rainfall, there may not be any variation at all. So within a period of one week, the quantity of rainfall will never vary. But what will happen if this onset is further delayed to even 15 days after, definitely at that time, we cannot go for the prominent varieties which are recommended for the particular season because few varieties and few crops are very very specific for example nama adi pattam thedi vidan solluvom illengla and the mari specific nama kokuda varieties we cannot plant for that particular season and uh, that skip in season or monsoon will definitely impact the yield that is why we are receiving very poor uneconomical yield when your sowing is delayed and second component is early withdrawal of monsoon. So what will happen? Definitely all the crops will be coming to the near physiological maturity or in the maturity phase, which we call it as a terminal stress. So whatever, though the crop was flourished during the vegetative stage, when the crop is subjected to the terminal stress, definitely it will also have an impact on the yield because that is the phase which the crop should not be exposed to the stress condition. So at that reproductive phase, when the crop is being exposed to stress, definitely it will also result in the poor yield. So for example, in the Kovalpati region during the Northeast monsoon, maybe the normal onset date may be 15th to 28th of October. So at that time, we can go for almost all cereals and millets crops along with um, groundnut etc but if the monsoon is further delayed uh, up to one week you can also practice the same type of crops by including bajra and sunflower but if it further delayed to the second week of november almost uh, 21 days after we cannot go for the same type of crops which we will be choosing for the October 15th to 28th. Then there is a only option to go for short duration crops and sunflower is recommended for the Kovalpati region to go when there is a delayed in onset of monsoon up to November second week. Uh, as in case of early withdrawal of monsoon, then what is maybe the practices we can adopt? So at that time, we can go for thinning of the alternate dose so we can reduce the population so uh, though may though the yield may be reduced but we could experience a partial the, whatever the resources are available will be utilized for the available crops and your yield yield can be improved so in such case you can go for thinning of the crops and also you can do some moisture conservation practices such as mulching dry mulch or a crop residue mulches to increase the moisture conservation of the moisture conservation in those areas so these may be the Contingency, contingency measures that can be adapted when there is a early withdrawal of the monsoon. So what I would like to say here is if there is a early withdrawal of monsoon or post rainy season crops, that uh, northeast monsoon season crops, when it fails due to inadequate uh, availability of soil moisture, definitely it will result in reproductive and maturity phases of the crop. And also it will have an impact on the ensuing year, year crops also. So whenever there is a deficit in the Northeast monsoon, it will have a reflection in the next coming year seasonal crops too. Maybe the yield we have been seeing in the last slides, not only the quantity, but also the quality of the crop produce during the moment also is affected by your weather. So that is maybe to, due to the transport of the markets. Everything depends upon the weather condition for which we cannot forget the uh, price hike of onion in the last few months. So almost the unseasonal rainfall, mostly which is uh, towards the maturity phase or in the, when the key critical phases, when it fetches, when, when it coincides with the rainfall, definitely your price hike is uh, definitely sure for ready. Likewise, so bad weather has an uh, impact on the quality of the produce during the transport. So such a case, we have to monitor the weather condition for uh, storing and also transport of the produce.
So this is what uh, whenever IMD, India Meteorological Department portrait for the forecast or the monsoon forecast for the ensuing season. So how the Karib season will be, how the Rabi season will be. Definitely almost in the all, all the grain production areas, there will be expectation. So for the past, for the last year, what was the output realized? And based upon the monsoon forecast, what is the expected agricultural production in terms of productivity, in terms of area coverage? Everything is different upon the monsoon forecast. So that comes the market-led extension group. So always they will keep an eye on the weather forecast. Now, uh, just we cannot uh, see what is the forecast has been given. We have to trace the forecast pathway, whether it is going in the normal normal way, whether the, it is uh, uh, receiving to all the ends, how far it is planned. The progress or the progressive nature of the monsoon should be traced out. And uh, this has an, uh, the, all the market led the extension group will have an eye on this pathway of the monsoon to trace out whether the market strategy is going to the correct end. So this is what I have told you in the previous slides, the, the break in monsoon. So in the first two slides, we could see how the active day rainfall and how the break day rainfall. So during the active day rainfall, we could able to see almost the entire country is covered with your rainfall. There was only a little sparse variation where there is no rainfall observed. So when, the, when there is a break day in rainfall, only one, one fourth of the portion is receiving a rainfall amount. In that means your trough, we could see here, we could realize or appreciate here, the trough has been go, uh, gone towards your south direction. That's what your southern portion of your India is receiving good rainfall. So this is the way active day rainfall and break day rainfall is seen and uh, in the next two slides you could see in the one decades ago this break in rainfall seems to be very little the five to seven days break bar is very small and in the recent decades that break in days has been extended so this much days if you see there it may be five to seven days and in the second slide it may be seven to fifteen days so definitely the coping mechanism not only really depends upon the um, you know, practices what we adapt and also this break in, break in period is also influenced by the type of soil, soil physical properties like the water holding capacity. So again, if, the, if it is a clay type of soil, it has a capability to retain the water in terms of moisture to support the crop growth additionally for one or two days. Suppose if it, if it is to be rain, I mean a red soil or sandy soil, definitely it will lose the moisture quickly and the frequency of irrigation. So the dependability of rainfall is very high for the sandy type of soil. So when you come for the temperature, as I've told you earlier, the global average temperature or temperature is increasing. And uh, we, we cope the term both climate change and greenhouse effect, global warming, etc. And uh, the temperature hike, when you see for a maximum temperature and minimum temperature, the minimum temperature uh, seems to be reaching the higher extent compared to your maximum temperature. That in case your warm nights are increasing compared to your day temperature. So what will happen if your nighttime temperature increases? Already there are many literatures uh, displayed that one degree increase in night temperature will have five to 10% reduction in the yield of cereal crops. So likewise, there are many literatures available says that almost when your nighttime temperature increases, it increases the photorespiration of, of the crop and it will have an impact on the yield of the crop. So if you could see almost in Tamil Nadu also, we are witnessing almost 70 to 75 percent of the area, the nighttime temperature is increasing at an, at an spike level compared to your daytime temperature. So this slide says about the drought periodicity and uh, we could see that um, except in the northeastern states, almost all the areas, the periodicity seems to be one out of three, one out of five and one out of four. And especially Tamil Nadu, one by three. It explains that every three years once there is a possibility for Tamil Nadu to face the drought-like situation. So drought and flood are not a new phenomena. It is a recurrent phenomena and we need to be get prepared for the contingency plan, prepare the contingency plan for both the aspects. Because, but the periodicity is one by three, but the intensity of the drought is increasing in the recent years. 
which was witnessed in the year 2016. You could see the 2016 drought was the worst his drought in the historical period. And uh, in the year 2002, it was declared as an all India drought severe year. That means almost you are uh, more than uh, 20 to 40 percent of the geographical area is affected by drought and also your productivity has gone to a very lesser extent. So when we compare and again, if you go back in 1987, it was a further worst drought which affected the Tamil India as a very worst case. So likewise, some of the historical drought, droughts are prevailing over here. But now in the recent 2016, it almost um, makes the economical crisis, which means all the irrespective of the monsoon period, it uh, makes a very, very uh, huge damage at the village level too. Not only the drought scale, if you see to the extreme rainfall cases. So here this picture says one day extreme rainfall. So Munala Patamna, Urunal Malapatingina, or Ambadi Mam, Ladu Aruvadi Mam pair the Romba extreme, Yapiad or the Rona Kramariko. But Ipalana Marisenta Pakamoga, Urunal or a rainfall Patingana, minimum hundred millimeter when the Sadar Namark. So that is the picture it depicts. So to receive hundred millimeter of rainfall, in a day is very very common that is it expressed to 97.25 percentage and only if it is more than 100 mm the percentage is less than 2.5 percentage so it will be a very common phenomena in the recent past and also the near future the recept of one day rainfall that is more than 100 mm will be a very common phenomena so if you could see here in the imd has given out of 10 years almost every year recorded more than 250 mm more than uh, 270 50 mm i mean uh, 250 mm so this type of rainfall will not be a very uncommon phenomena in the in, in the near future and uh, when when you see this um, uh, i mean a uh, graph in the year 2015 uh, we cannot also forget the 2015 flood so if you could see almost in the northeastern part of tamil nadu all the coastal districts near the northern side have been ex uh, been experiencing extremely flood condition and uh, it uh, crossed more than 1800 percentage actual compared to your normal rainfall if it is supposed to receive 600 millimeter it has reached around 1800 millimeter which is um, i mean uh, 300 times higher towards the actual rainfall received And when I say about the extreme events, there are five events which are internationally declared at the extreme events. One is your drought, flood, cyclone, heat wave, and cold wave. So for our Tamil Nadu, the drought, flood, and cyclone are the most common phenomena. And this Gaja cyclone 2018, we could never forget because it had a landfall at Pudukotai. So it was a long lasting after a very uh, many years, the landfall happened at Tamil Nadu, which was at, uh, uh, during the Gaja cyclone. And in the above slide, you could see in the year 2019, uh, there was a two simultaneous cyclones. So normally one cyclone occurred will be there so it was october 31st 2019 we could see two kyar and maha so there are two cyclones formed at the same period so we could realize how far the intensity of the cyclone is being triggered due to the extreme events So when we see this picture, so as I said about the temperature, temperature, no. So it was the top five hottest year when we compare from 2015 to 2019. So almost all the years said to be a set record to receive the highest temperature in which in the 2016 followed by 19, 15, 17, and 18. So if, if you could see the temperature is above average. So 0 0.9 degree above average, 0.8 degree above average. So when you can have an average temperature, almost all these five years ranks the hottest year, which is, uh, in terms uh, shows the highest uh, uh, recorded warmest years in the record. And this year, 2019, I wish to say this is a year of extremes because all, if whatever the extreme events I have told, it has almost uh, makes a very sense for this picture. If you see from the year 2010 to 2019, this was the warmest decade, which was recording 0.36 degree average above the normal average temperature. So this is the seventh warmest year in recorded India. 
and when you see about the monsoon so it was 109% of the average monsoon so the normal uh, summer monsoon rainfall seems to be 88 cm and that in uh, this 2019 when you see it was 109% above the average monsoon so it seems to be the wettest in the 25 years and uh, as i said this is uh, regarding temperature and monsoon and third one is about cyclone the eight cyclonic storms occurs over indian sea indian sea so three is the normal phenomena whereas it has recorded eight cyclonic storms and five cyclones over arabian sea so this is the highest since 1902 there is a normal ratio of uh, cyclone occurrence between your bay of bengal and arabian sea so if there are four cyclones occurring in the bay of bengal there is a chance of uh, expecting one cyclone in the arabian Sea. But now, you, if you see, the intensity and the number of cyclones are increasing in the Arabian Sea as equally compared to your Bay of Bengal. So, it makes a sense that it has 850 deaths for rain and floods and 380 have been killed due with, by means of lightning and thunderstorm and 350 death toll in a means of heat waves and 79 killed due to the cold snowfall avalanche and uh, recorded in the North India. So, this year seems to be a year of extremes which uh, fetches almost all the extreme events happened in all the parts of our India. So these are the extremities which we have seen, drought, flood, uh, cyclones, extremities, etc., etc. So what might be the solution for all these things? So now we comes about the weather forecast. So every day in the television or in the newspaper, we used to see these different types of pictures representing either the day maybe of sunny in nature or cloudy in nature, overcast, thunderstorm expected, etc., etc. So these are the important weather signs. And now we are also very familiar in view these type of symbols and correlate what type of weather it is. So as we all know, so weather forecasting is an important phenomenon. So this predicts the state of atmosphere for any given location by using the application of science and technology. So uh, we, we, for which we have to make a sense that uh, weather or if I say about atmosphere, it is not a status, statical position. It will not rely on a particular place. So being uh, we are positioned in the tropical equator, we are the almost surrounded by three times uh, three sides by your water, our uh, geographical position is such a way that weather forecast will be very hard to reach 100% precision. So this sort of weather forecasting accuracy is being improved by applying huge different models and by employing many different techniques, we now could able to achieve the level of 80 to 85% precision in the weather forecast. So this weather forecasting services will have a wide role not only for general public agriculture or for the planners or stakeholders, it also helps for the aviation. So almost the pilots, when we have an airplane, very, uh, to quote a very short example, so whenever, there is, whenever a pilot is moving towards in the airplane, definitely he should never cross the cumulonimbus clouds. We call it as a CB clouds. So that's part, all the air pilots will be having operational meteorologists accompanying him to say then and there what is happening, what types of clouds are prevailing and which direction the wind is moving, at what speed it is moving. So even when a bird hit the aeroplane, when the when it is flying at an altitude of uh, 30, 36,000 feet, definitely it will make a huge damage to the airplane and also the passengers. And more, uh, to quote more specifically, when it uh, touches or enters the cumulonimbus clouds, definitely uh, it will uh, I mean, uh, fill with the death toll of the entire plane because inside the cumulonimbus clouds, it will be building like the super million clouds and it will engulf all the uh, cloud, I mean, um, planes and passengers and will, uh, will uh, he will not be visible to see the outside what is happening at all. So these are all the weather dependent form operations starting from your land preparation, sowing, transplanting, spraying operation, post harvest operation. So everything is weather dependent and all the form operations when it's planned accordingly to the prevailing weather, we could gain additional advantage over the relished profit. So there comes the need or the importance of forecast since because as I told you, almost the 50% of variation in the crop production is realized based upon the weather. And uh, when there is a proper uh, planning of uh, the recipe of the forecast, you could able to plan for the moisture conservation and also for the northeastern 
parts of your country we can plan for the flood relief for a region so whenever we are receiving a weather forecast at proper time it will pay way for to plan accordingly and to impact or to pay i mean uh, to make the management practices effectively so it almost help in holding the food grain prices in check through buffer stock operations so again i could able to quote a example because during the year of uh, 2000 um, uh, four maybe so when when the forecast seems to be a drought like condition almost it it pays a way to store whatever the uh, produce is available at a, in the public for the public distribution system because otherwise uh, what will happen if there is a good monsoon year definitely the agricultural production will be increasing and as i as i said earlier it will not make any impact in the food inflation rate but if suppose if that year is expecting any drought like condition definitely the agricultural area will be reducing and your food grain production will be under uh, a risk so at that time depending upon the forecast we can manage the public distribution system so what type of uh, producers can, should be uh, made as stock or buffer etc so we can also plan for climate based strategic agronomic planning and um, contingency agronomic measures should be prepared whether the forecast is uh, normal or above normal or below normal for the monsoon period so this is uh, the different types of forecast uh, as we know now casting which i said about for the aviation purpose it is used and short range forecasting medium range forecasting and long range forecasting or the different types of forecast available and it depends upon the hours or depending upon the duration we are they are classifying the forecast into different categories so why because we have given here these different types of uh, events like a thunderstorm dust storm cyclones because uh, what about the atmospheric changes is occurring because for example if you want to get thunderstorm it doesn't require any large scale variation in your atmosphere if there is a local convection this normally occurs during your march april may months so you are uh, due to the position of your earth and uh, sun the receptor of radiation will be on the higher side when you are at this heater to a large extent so there will be a sudden low pressure and uh, the air, air molecules will be moving towards the upside that you call as the updraft and that will be as a ground draft system so it uh, will have only a period of uh, 6 to 12 hours interval to develop so these type of events can be very well given by means of now casting and there is also a, a app called domini app which was de which is developed by iitm india uh, indian um, institute of tropical meteorology and uh, if you install that app it will give you the uh, thunderstorm activity so where the lightning occurrence are there where there is a activity of thunderstorm is expected for a uh, well in advance between 15 to 20 minutes in advance so this type of forecast is widely used for outdoor function and it is widely used for your general public and uh, short range forecasting the validity here you could see it is 12 to 14 hours so almost all these uh, whatever the forecast coming for your short range and the medium range will cover seven different weather parameters like your cloud spread and temperature wind speed and direction rainfall and relative humidity etc so this is also user friendly and user your farmers or um, uh, uh, can use this type of forecast this will help in adjusting the timing of operation scheduling of irrigation and production of plants from frost and this type of forecast is widely used in the temperate regions since whenever there is an expectation of frost in an area definitely you can advise to go for irrigation so when you give a irrigation during the frost infestation it will uh, surpass the effect of frost they will maintain the difference in our uh, temperature and it will not affect the crop produce so this is a very very important type of forecast among the different types of forecast so the validity for this period is 3 to 10 days whatever i have told you earlier all the seven different weather parameters are given here and uh, this is uh, widely applicable to determine the time of sowing decision of spraying planning of irrigation management of labor and decision on harvesting so this type of forecast is being done by our agroclimate research center which is in tie up with india meteorological department through gramin kishi mausam seva servers
So whenever the forecast is beyond 10 days or a month or for a season, then it is called as a long range forecast. So it will give you not a single value. It will give you the monsoonal total rainfall and also the abnormality of the temperature. So uh, if you witness the past three slides, whenever uh, there is a the date or the period of extension is higher, your accuracy level is lower. Uh, so when I say here for the long range forecast, the accuracy is 60%, whereas for the medium range forecast, it is 70 to 80%. And if it is for now casting, it will be around 90%. Because uh, we are going to give a forecast based upon the immediate response. So that is the case, the forecast accuracy on the higher side. But when we go for a long range forecast, we have to assess for a particular season. So with Within the season, definitely there will be a sudden spurt in weather changes, which may also influence during the seasonality period. So that's why the accuracy of the long range forecast is a little bit lower when compared to the short range and medium range forecast. So this is the network of Agromet advisory system. So from the Indian Meteorological Department, it has around 130 Agromet field units. So these, uh, the role of Agromet field units is to prepare the weather-based agro advisories for the region concern, and it will have a tie up with district level agencies, and it will send the forecast to the farmers. So this is a flow chart, how the forecast received, and the preparing the forecast for uh, crops, livestock, and allied activities. And uh, this forecast will be disseminated and uh, there will be a coordinated review and the monitoring mechanism will be there to improve the forecast. And it will have an um, assessment after the every end of the crop to know how far the weather-based advisories are efficient. These can be improved by means of good feedback from the farmers community. So this is the display for um, uh, the forecast which is being prepared for our center. So this is the way the past data will be received for the seven parameters which we have listed here. And the forecast will be received for the same seven parameters. And as I told you earlier, after the receipt of the forecast, definitely all the GKMS centers. So in Tamil Nadu, we have seven GKMS centers, two from veterinary, one is at Chennai and Namakal, and rest of the five places like your Coimbatore, Kovalpatti, Pechuparai, Uti, and uh, Kanyakumari. So all these places will have uh, uh, G, uh, comes under the GKMS unit and uh, all, all they will cover the entire Tamil Nadu. So what they will do after the receipt of the forecast, they will contact the nearby agricultural officers, the JDA office, and um, they will get, get hold what are the um, in major crops, either it may be irrigated crops or the rain fed crops, what are the major crops? Not only the crops, they need to assess the stage and the state of the crop. So only uh, all the, um, you know, if you get the forecast, it will not be the same for uh, the same all type of the crops because the stage will be differing. So for example, if I get a forecast of rainfall, if it is a moderate rainfall, and if there is a maize crop in the area, and if the maize crop is at the tasseling stage. So in a few areas, it may be in the tasseling stage. And in a few areas, it may be in the sowing phase. So what happened, this uh, moderate rainfall definitely will have an impact on the tasseling stage. So maize is a, such a crop which cannot uh, tolerate the stagnation of water. So I should know the stage of the crop and then I have to give the advisory. Similarly, uh, if there is a moderate amount of rainfall, suppose it is maybe 20 millimeter for that particular day. So definitely what could be suggested, your spraying operations can be postponed because uh, only you have to spray the spray chemicals when there is a rain-free period of at least six to eight hours. Otherwise, all the chemicals will be washed out. So in such a way, you could able to save the water, price water, and also your labor cost efficiency will be saved. So, and also the harvesting operations. So if you are expecting rainfall, you can postpone the Opera, harvesting operations for a day or two. So likewise, based upon the forecast and depending upon the state and stage of the crop, you can issue the advisories which will help the farming community. And these are the list of uh, private weather forecast agencies. So such as uh, this, this may be uh, available in uh, different types of apps and the Android mobiles, AccuWeather, Anything Weather, Atmos Weather, Avis Weather Service and National Weather Forecasting. And this is a very familiar SkyMet. Uh, these are different private weather forecast agencies. So uh, these are the different private sectors who also play a role in giving the 
forecast either maybe a medium range or a for a long range forecast so now here we under tamil nadu agricultural university tnau we have this network tamil nadu agricultural weather network so this is uh, we have almost placed in 384 uh, blocks of tamil nadu and this automatic weather station have 10 different sensors as listed below so it has your air temperature wind direction wind speed relative humidity atmospheric pressure solar radiation soil moisture soil temperature leaf wetness and rainfall so this is a website which i have given you can go to this website tom.tnau.ac.in it is a freely available web service and you can uh, enter to this website and you can uh, able to know what is the weather observed for the past day it is uh, recording the hourly data so every day current day data will be available and also past seven days what is the data recorded for the particular place and for the past one month what is the data uh, recorded for the particular place you can able to see by selecting the district and selecting the block in the similar fashion also you can select a forecast page for the same set of district or a I mean a block and you could able to get the six days advanced lead time weather medium range weather forecast so here we have employed a model called global forecasting system model based upon the weather and research forecast so this is a model which have a three kilometer forecast output and the resolution of the forecast seems to be 70 to 80 percentage so what all the types of forecast is being planned and uh, the activeness and also the accuracy is being improved and uh, for the purpose that should be used for the timely planning uh, that should increase the input use efficiency and reduce the input loss so this is the aim for the uh, improving the weather forecast and one such activity is this wrf model 4.32 version is now being used to generate the six days medium range forecast so this is the second portion so uh, based upon the weather forecast and also the past scenario scenario we could able to prepare the automated agro advisory services for the parameters like there are minimum temperature maximum temperature relative humidity wind speed rainfall etc and for this uh, wrf the data is being generated from a global forecasting system at uh, the resolution of 0.25 degree resolution so the cycle will be 12 hour cycle and it takes around 6 hours interval so this is the weather scenario developed so the scientists of agroclimate research center have developed 54 weather scenarios by making different permutation and combinations and uh, they have we have prepared around the agro advisories for 108 crops depending upon the stages of the crop so this is the app also you can log into the web, um, in a web application so this software is uh, you can see in uh, tnaes.tnu.ac.in and this is the seasonal forecast that is being generated from Tamil Nadu University. So this is based upon the two climatic drivers like your Southern Oscillation Index and Indian Ocean Dipole. And with the precision of 60% of accuracy, the probability of the expecting rainfall for the district wise is being generated and given for the public users. Yes, thank you for your patience hearing. So if there are a few queries, 